Every year, millions of people join the exciting and dynamic world of GMRS radios. And if you are watching this video, you are probably one of them. So as the official queen of all that is GMRS, allow me to say, welcome to my kingdom. But it is not all rainbows and butterflies in my GMRS kingdom, because sadly, every year, millions more are confoculated by things like different types of GMRS radios, what you're allowed to do or not do with a GMRS radio, and probably most confoculating of all, what are all of these buttons for? But fear not and let not your heart be troubled because I, the undisputed queen of all that is GMRS, is here to explain these things to you in a way that even you will understand. Are you ready? I present to you the GMRS radio. As you can probably already see with your very own vision sauce bags, just like people, they all look very different. Some are small, some are big, some are yellow, and some are... Never mind. Some are very complicated and some are very, very simple just like people but because they are all gmrs radios and by that i mean that it said gmrs on the box or on the advertisement when you bought it because they are all gmrs radios all of them every single one has the 22 standard gmrs channels most also have eight more repeater channels but we're not going to worry about those for now on the box some gmrs radios will say things like 100 channels or 999 channels, but do not fall for the marketing lies and hype. All GMRS radios can talk only on those previously mentioned standard 22 channels. There are also those eight repeater channels, but I already told you we're not going to talk about those. All of those other hundreds of channels that you see listed on the box of most GMRS radios are simply custom channel slots that you can use to store either one of those standard 22 channels with a custom tone or code added to it. I will discuss that more momentarily. Or you can store things like the NOAA weather channels, commercial FM radio stations, or even hams radios frequencies. And all of those channels would be for listening only. And this is because most GMRS radios can also receive way more channels and frequencies than they can transmit on. So although you can transmit only on those 22 standard channels, you can listen to a lot of other stuff. Some manufacturers even go further with the marketing lies by putting things on the box like this radio has 100 subchannels for privacy. And allow me to be very, very clear. In the GMRS kingdom, there is no such thing as subchannels or privacy. Nothing on GMRS is private. No matter what the box says, if you are talking on a GMRS radio, everybody, everybody within range of your radio can hear everything that you say. When manufacturers talk about subchannels or secure channels, they are talking about what us radio experts refer to as tones or codes being used on those regular 22 channels. Those tones and codes can be used for things like connecting to a repeater or for blocking out other people talking on the channel so that you don't have to hear them, but they can always hear you. I know that this part can be very confoculating if you are new to GMRS, but just remember this. Nothing in GMRS is secure or private. Another major point of confocularity is that all GMRS radios are compatible with all FRS radios. FRS radios are also sometimes referred to by us radio experts as bubble pack radios because when you buy them at Walmart, they come in those plastic bubble packages that you need a chainsaw to open. Anyway, FRS radios are simply very low-powered GMRS radios that can't talk on repeaters and that you cannot connect to bigger antennas. Because on an FRS radio, the antennas do not come off. In the way that they do on a GMRS radio. As you can see, I have removed the antennas from all of these radios to prevent poking out my eye, but you could, on a GMRS radio, connect a larger antenna 
for example, on your roof, giving the radio many, many FARs. GMRS radios can also talk at up to 50 watts, whereas a FRS radio is limited to only 1 or 2 watts, I don't remember. And this is why you do not need a license to talk on an FRS radio, but you do need a license to talk on a GMRS radio, even though they use the exact same channels. I will discuss that more momentarily. Perhaps the biggest point of confoculation to people that are new to the exciting and dynamic world of GMRS is radio programming. And the important thing to remember here is that all GMRS radios, all can be used right out of the box. No programming is required. You can take any GMRS radio right out of the box, turn it on, pick any of the standard 22 channels, pull the push to talk trigger, and start talking. You do not need to connect the radio to your computer and you do not need any special software. All of that is only if you choose to do fancy stuff, such as creating new custom channels or changing settings inside the radio. But on virtually all GMRS radios, and with very few exceptions, you can do all of that same stuff right on the radio itself using the keypad and the buttons. Even on GMRS radios that do not have any buttons, such as this Wuxin, Ocean, KG805G. However, to program one of these, it is a pain in the bitch because it doesn't have all the buttons, making it easier. So keep that in mind when shopping for your first GMRS radio because the lack of all of those complicated extra knobs and buttons can be alluring. But later, when you get fancy and you actually want to do something more advanced, you may regret your hasty decision. Just like all of those other poor choices you've probably been making your entire life like watching this video. Or you can also use these buttons for directly typing in non-GMRS frequencies to listen to. Remember, most GMRS radios allow you to listen to a lot more than just those standard 22 channels. To do that, you would just switch to what us radio experts refer to as VFO mode, VFO mode, and directly type in the frequency that you want to listen to. But remember, because a GMRS radio can only transmit on those standard 22 GMRS channels, if you try to pull the talk trigger whilst on a non-GMRS frequency, most radios will just emit the screw you tone. On most radios, you can even save that frequency as a custom channel so that you can later access that listen-only channel just like you do with one of these standard 22 channels. Another thing that causes much wailing and gnashing of teeth for newcomers to the GMRS world is the entire issue of FCC's licensing. And that is because our overlords at the FCC's have decreed that to transmit on a GMRS radio... Thou must haveth a GMRS license. You do not need a license to purchase, own, possess, or listen to a GMRS radio. You only need that license if you plan to pull this trigger. There is no test for a GMRS license, other than figuring out how to navigate through the world's worst website that the FCC's apparently has not updated since 1992. But if you can figure out how to give the FCC's your monies on their crappy website, the GMRS license will cost you only 35 monies. It is good for 10 years and, and it covers everyone in your immediate family. The FCC's says, thou must say your GMRS call sign over the radio at least once every 15 minutes if and when you are talking on the radio. So if your call sign was, say, KMG365, you would simply say at the beginning of your transmission, this is KMG365. How is the weather today? And if someone in your immediate family was sharing your call sign as allowed by the FCC's, they would use that exact same call sign the exact same way. Or optionally, you could optionally add a station letter or number to the call sign just so that everyone can tell you and your family members apart over the radio. This is not required and you do not have to do this because this is optional. And you would do that pretty much the same way. You would just say, this is KMG365A calling KMG365B. Do you copy? Or this is KDK1 to KDK2. Do you copy? Our telephones don't seem to be doing too well. Are the lines down by any chance? Over. Another thing to note about a GMRS license is that having a GMRS license only allows you to transmit on GMRS radios. A GMRS license does not allow you to, for example, transmit on a hams radios 
that has been programmed to transmit over GMRS frequencies. Doing that would make our overlords at the FCCs very, very sad. But what if you're a rebel? What if you did use a hams radios to talk on GMRS channels? Or what if you have no license at all? and you talk to your friends on a GMRS radio anyway. My friend, whilst doing this would violate the FCC rules, rules, some call them regulations, not laws, rules. It's a big difference. If you were to do any of those things, contrary to popular internet myth, usually spread by some people that think they're the radio police, contrary to those many lies that you may find online, according to the FCC's own public database of who they go after and who gets in trouble over the last 15 years, you will not go to jail. You will not get a $10,000 fine. You will not even receive a mean letter from the FCC's. The fact is that in the last 15 years, the FCC's just does not care. And if anyone tries to tell you fairy tales about people getting big fines or going to jail all the time. The best way to shut that person up is to ask that person to give you a link to those enforcement actions in the FCC's public enforcement database. Because everything that the FCC does is, by law, publicly available on the interwebs for everyone to see. And if the stories that they're talking about are not in that database, then my friend, it did not happen. Some people may also tell tall stories about hams, radios, operators easily triangulating your location and tracking you down and then reporting you to the FCCs if you break any of the FCCs rules whilst using your GMRS radio. And first of all, why? Why would a hams, radios operator care about anything happening on GMRS channels? Hams, radios, and GMRS are not related in any way. And a hams radios license does not even allow a hams radios operator to transmit on a GMRS radio. They have to buy a GMRS license just like you and me, just like all of the other regular people. And yet, some people do seem to be obsessed about trying to control everything that other people do, even if it's none of their goddamn business. So I guess now we all have to suffer. Irregardlessly, if you are talking on a GMRS radio Anyone can fairly easily and relatively quickly find your location, and anyone can report you to the FCCs for anything, because the FCC's website has an online form that makes reporting violations very simple. So it is true, they can find you and they can report you to the FCCs. And then, nothing will happen. And that is because, as I just mentioned only a moment ago, according to the FCC's own public database of who they go after, the FCC's apparently does not care. And finally, allow me to discuss etiquette and lingo when talking on a GMRS radio and some important settings. The etiquette for GMRS is that there is no etiquette and there is no special lingo. GMRS is made for normal people to use, so you do not need to say any special codes or talk any certain way. You just talk like a normal person. The FCC does not really like when you use cuss words and it makes them very sad. But as I just mentioned, the FCC does not really care. But bear in mind that GMRS is a family radio service and children could be listening. Because remember those little Hello Kitty radios that you got your kids for Christmas? Those are FRS radios. And if you recall from only a moment ago, FRS radios can hear all of the GMRS channels. So watch your mouth. And when you say your call sign, which, by the way, most normal people never bother with, but if you do, you just say, for example, KMG365 or whatever. You do not need to say Kilo Martian Guillotine 36 or Fiver or anything stupid like that. And if you do, most normal people listening are just going to make fun of you. As far as settings, as I mentioned only moments ago, you can use a GMRS radio right out of the box without having to change any settings. However, there is one setting that most serious GMRS users consider to be very important that only the high-end GMRS radios have. So if your radio has this setting, it is very important that you enable it. This setting is what us radio experts refer to as the Roger Beep. And if anyone ever tells you over the radio to turn off your Roger Beep that you turned on on your radio that you own because they 
don't like it, just remind them that it is your radio and your choice. And if they do not like it, they can change the channel and listen to something else, or they can go eat shit.